What is the purpose of living? Whenever you ask this slightly cliched philosophical question, you always get a slightly different answer from person to person. This suggests the meaning of life is entirely subjective. Most people are concerned with leaving a legacy of some kind, like through their work or children. When searching for a universal or objective meaning though, we tend to think on a grander scale about how our capacities as humans make us different to other animals. So what is it that makes us special? And how can we draw meaning from this to live a fulfilling life? To find out what this meaning is, let's examine how we're designed biologically and the mental processes behind how we survive as organisms. Fundamentally, we are apes with very similar traits to the rest of the animal kingdom. This means that we're this big bag of desires and impulses that consumes most of our attention. The most manifest of these are overtly physical. So the need to eat, drink, sleep and breathe. These are all functions of our basic human biology. And when we need any of these things, our bodies let us know in a very discernible way. As well as these, we have things that cross the border into mental, so things like violent or sexual desires. Nietzsche, for instance, would have us believe that we're oriented towards the will to power, with all our attention focused on being the best that we can be. Freud believed that our actions are much more oriented towards sexual reproduction and that our superego is holding back our most basic egoistic desires. It's clear that we have a set of primal desires that are hardwired in us from millions of years of evolution. And it's often said then that the sole purpose of living is not to die. The reason that we have desires at all is to ensure the greatest chance of passing our genes onto the next generation. Is this really the only meaning to life though? Does everything we do just refer back to this survival mechanism? That perspective on life just feels quite empty. Perhaps if we examine some of the traits that are often cited as making us different to other animal species, maybe we can find some meaning in these ideas. There's not a great deal of value to be had in just satisfying these insatiable mental or physical desires. It's the more unique and complex desires which are more gratifying to fulfill the things that make life worth living. The thing is though, many of these behaviours that make life worth living can still be explained away just as a survival mechanism for our biological vessel. The projects we spend most of our time on in our lives have a clear biological benefit. And building a legacy is just a means of living on in some form when death hits your door. What about morality? our inner barometer of what we know to be right and wrong. Does this make us special in some way? Socrates called this part of our judgement the daemon, similar to what's commonly known as the conscience. This is a remarkable feature of the human race because actually, doing good for your fellow man for the sake of doing good can actually often be detrimental for the individual which goes against the idea that we're out for ourselves. It's now thought though that we also act through species preservation. And 
that our tendencies towards kindness are instinctual and evolved as a way of preserving the species overall. Meaning that kindness too is actually a functional trait for our species. How about creativity or art, imagination? Could these things be an indicator of a deeper meaning to life? A lot of the finer pleasures in life come from the appreciation of art or beauty in its many different forms. We've created some of the most astounding artefacts ever to have existed, whether it be buildings or literature or paintings. But why do we do it? Where does this creative impulse come from? Again, these things don't ostensibly seem to have any survival value. But what is imagination or creativity really? It's thinking outside the box and expressing ourselves to others in a way that they can understand as well. And life thrives on diversity. So anything that sets you aside as different can give you an advantage over others in your population. So it's probable that this creative impulse is built into us to force us to think differently. And if that allows us to increase our chance of having a child, creativity too is a survival mechanism. And then we come to consciousness. Many people think that our capacity to make conscious choices is the thing that separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom. After all, consciousness allows us to make a lot of biologically reckless decisions. Look at how we've learned to utilise our adrenaline gland for enjoyment. Putting our lives in danger for the sheer thrill of it. What about the phenomenon of antinatalism? More and more people are deciding not to have children, essentially committing genetic suicide. And then there's actual suicide. Our capacity for consciousness comes with a nasty side dish of knowing for sure that we're going to die. And suicide seems to be counterintuitive to this biological end of the preservation of life in every way I can think of. There's a paradox here though. Although consciousness has allowed us to make some destructive decisions, the fact that we possess it has meant that we've progressed in many ways. Particularly since the agricultural revolution, we've achieved some amazing feats, developed incredible systems to facilitate our living in comfort. And we've spent our time organising the world how we want it. So really, even though consciousness has allowed us to do some counterintuitive things, it really does help us. So again, consciousness just appears to be this thing which prevents us from dying too early. Is there any human trait or behaviour that you can think of which doesn't exist as part of a deeply embedded survival mechanism of our animal past. Because it appears that there's nothing you can claim for sure that isn't. Our entire being then is in a way already dictated to us by the way we're constituted. The way we think, the way we move, everything. It's all predetermined. This points to a rather bleak conclusion. The universal meaning of life is simply not to die. And seeing as we all die anyway, What's the point in striving for that? Well, 
The answer is, we don't strive for it. We need to ask ourselves the difficult question as to whether there is any grander purpose to our lives at all. And if the answer is no, then to really figure out what it is we're living for. And this is why the meaning of life is so subjective. We don't live for our biological compulsions to survive no matter what. The reason we're here in the first place is just circumstantial. But whilst we're here experiencing the world, we can then find reasons as to why we want to keep experiencing these things. If we can accept the absurdity of our existence as fact, it provides an opportunity for us to indulge in our own personal purpose for life. And everyone's a bit different. Pursuing these things is what brings meaning.